Hey guys, what's going on? It is what the hell is today. Today's Thursday. It's uh, March third, two thousand twenty-two. Hmm. Anyway, uh, today I want to talk a little bit about emissions, and you know, um, you know, we're, we might use the word climate, the, the words climate change in this video, but we're you know we're really not going to get in too much into that sort of thing. Um, what, I, what I want to talk about are you know, some things that we could do and some things that you know maybe the, the federal government might want to consider doing um, in terms of emissions. Um, you know, I when I'm on here, I watch a lot of, you know, I watch Scotty Kilmer's videos. Uh, he's very smart. He's worked on cars his, just about his entire life. Um, I find his videos entertaining, and I mean, some of the titles, like, let's be honest, they're clickbait, but, you know, the titles, but, you know, he makes good videos, and, uh, you know, he was talking about, you know, in one of the videos about a lithium shortage, and then there's the question of, you know, if we do all these all-electric vehicles, like they, <clears throat> a lot of people want to do, um, a lot of people that are concerned about climate change would like to do. The, the, the question is, what do we do with these batteries when the batteries wear out? They're big, huge lithium batteries, and, you know, the, 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 way, the way you have to go about disposing of them, I mean, that, that's not really good for our planet. So, I, I don't necessarily know that the full electric car is the way to go. I don't think we're there yet. Um, I don't know if we'll ever be there in my lifetime. Uh, and, I mean, it, it look... The electric motors have great torque. It's like instant torque on demand. Um, and that's a wonderful thing. And, you know, when it's, you know, springtime or, you know, fall or even summertime, if the temperatures are okay and you're not putting tremendous strain on your battery, I mean, that's that's great. The car is going to perform well. But, you know, batteries don't really like the winter. And it's really hard to get a full charge on them. So that kind of makes the whole hydrogen cell thing seem very interesting. But I'm going to let Scotty Kilmers and the people that know more about that stuff talk about it. Um, you know, right now here, what I want to talk about is, you know, the current, the present uh, gasoline, you know, gasoline cars. And what, what can we do right now um, that would help our environment, um, help our planet? Now, we're not responsible for the rest of the world. I know Republicans, that's hard to understand. <laughs> If you're a Republican, you know, because they like being involved, well, I guess we could say Democrats, too. That's why I'm an independent. But I know it's, it, it's hard, but America can't worry about the rest of the world all the time. We can't police the rest of the world. they got to handle their own stuff. But one thing we can be concerned about is our ozone layer, our atmosphere, our country. Okay? I want to ask you a question. Why is it that we have 50 states, and then we have Washington, D.C. also, but not all 50 states emissions test the cars in this state, or in this country, excuse me. Oh, well, there's not many people in that state. doesn't matter. The Earth's round. There's an atmosphere and an ozone layer above our whole country. Not just California, New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and the other states that do emissions testing on their vehicles. Okay? Um, so, I think maybe the federal government should look into doing something as far as emissions testing. I know that's going to make me very unpopular, but if you really care about our environment as a whole in this country, I mean... You've got sections, I believe, I believe there are sections in Nevada that don't even do emissions testing. Some of them do. Like, I have a cousin that lives in, uh, she lives in Vegas, and she's got to go get her car smogged every year. I think it's every year out there. And then California, they have, like, the strictest emissions standards in the country. So how does that make any sense if you're in California? You could be literally, like, feet away from a, a, a section of Nevada that doesn't even do emissions testing. 
and you could drive around with you know pe people are probably you know people could drive around you know, they'll, they'll take the converters off their cars and that's what we're going to get to in this video that, that kind of shit right there people's you know people's misinterpretation of the law okay oh well my state law says we don't have well my state says we don't have to do emissions testing we don't have it oh i live in florida and jeb bush said that the emissions smog check cost too much money so he took it out of the budget 20 years ago and eliminated it i'll keep my feelings about mr jeb bush out of this video they're not good but I digress but anyway I just find it funny that when people say at the state level say okay we're going to eliminate governors say we're going to eliminate emissions testing in a given state like Florida or you know one of the other ones where they don't have emissions testing on cars that does not change the fact that federal law says that if your automobile came from the factory equipped with a catalytic converter, that catalytic converter is to stay on that vehicle. Now, obviously, catalytic converters go bad. They have a lifespan. And if you don't maintain your vehicle, that lifespan is dramatically shortened. But you can always change it and put a new one on that performs to the same, you know, the same OEM specification. And I think the government, federal government, would be just fine with that. People do that every day. What I don't think the federal government would be too happy with if they actually took the time to investigate are people in states like Florida. And, you know, certain ones, these people make YouTube videos. Maybe you've seen a video of them washing their Camaro because they're an attractive young female and you need to see you you, know, you need to see you need to learn from an attractive young female in tight pants or really short shorts how to wash a car because you don't know how to wash a car otherwise you know yeah sure we've all seen those videos <laughs> they're out there we're not gonna stop them okay they're ridiculous but you know they get lots of views regardless um, but anyway, I was watching the one channel, and, it was a, and another video, this particular individual was changing the oil in their car, and they happened to have their uh, Camaro up on the lift. Now, this is heavily modified engine, um, heavily modified, beyond stock, um, and I happened to notice the exhaust system. Where's the converters at? And then I saw... Like, I, I guess a different video that, that, that this person had Florida tags on their car. Then I went and I looked up Florida's emissions standards and was surprised to find that Jeb Bush got rid of them like 20 years ago. Because he felt the program cost too much money to run. So, I think that, that what that person needs to understand, now that person's young and they want to have a loud, fast car with no mufflers on it or, you know, or straight pipe, I guess, as they call them, and it has no converters on it, this and that and the other. But federal law says if that car came with converters on it, that it should have converters on it. So, I don't understand. I've seen lots of other videos where, you know, I've seen some Mustangs that have no converters on them. People just driving them down the road. Oh, well, we're in Tennessee. Who cares? We're in a section of Tennessee where they don't do any any smog checks, so we don't care. And it is irresponsible of certain people to say, oh, well, you're, you live in this part of the country where they don't do no emissions testing, so you can drive around with the check engine light on. It doesn't matter. I want you guys to do me a favor. If your mechanic ever tells you that, I want you to get in your car Throw it and drive, and get the hell out of there as fast as you can, because that's not a good mechanic. All right? You want to maintain your car. You want your car not to pollute. You want your car to be in good in, in good condition. All right? And I know it's work. Because you know what? There's a, there's a lot of shady shysters out there that are just looking to take your money from you. And it's going to be hard to find that that old school old fashioned person, male or female, that 
works on cars, whatever. It could be anybody that works on cars. don't matter what they are. Um, you know, they work on, you know, they're going to work on your car. They're going to charge you a good price. They're going to be honest with you, okay? This is something that we recommend to change, but you have some time with it. You don't have to do it right now. You can do it a couple weeks, a couple months. You know, you could do it in a couple months. It might last another six months a year. You know, my, my dad was a professional mechanic for 35 years until a car accident in the year 2000 more or less forced him into an early retirement because it fractured the L5 in his back. And he's had to deal with that pain for the last 22 years. Um, you know, I know I know the shysters. I can spot them from a mile away. Yes, the technology has changed a lot since 2000. But the, ba the basic idea is still there. So... My thoughts are, listen, and even to the, the person who makes YouTube videos with the, with the Camaro, I understand people are young. You're only young once and you want to have fun. I understand some of you may live in states where states or particular, particular areas where they don't do emissions testing and you want to have some fun. But do you want to be able to keep having fun? Because eventually the government is going to get tired of this. And like it or not, our climate is changing. All right, I remember 1997 here in New Jersey, Christmas Day. It was sunny and 75. Today is March 3rd. I'm looking at the little bar on the bottom, the little bar at the bottom of my screen, my computer screen here. It's 47 degrees right now, and we're in March. Yet in 1997, it was warmer on Christmas Day than it is here in March. And it's always windy. There's, you know, lots of hurricanes and, you know, tornadoes and stuff. And that, I mean, some people may not, you know, there are climate change deniers, but like it or not, there, our climate is changing. The weather, weather patterns are changing. What's causing it? I don't know. But I know, you know, if if they want to say that it's pollution caused from cars, maybe we need to do a little bit better job at the federal level of keeping an eye on these gasoline-powered cars and making sure that people are running the proper emissions equipment on them so that they're not, you know, they're not sending harmful gases into the air. It's better for all of us. Because right now the technology is not there for electric cars, and it's for total electric cars. I don't, I don't think that it is. And you know, who says I? Who the hell says I want to drive one? You're never going to escape that versatility of the internal combustion engine. Not, not unless you go to a system, you dramatically increase the emissions equipment on it, so that it runs cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. Or you go with something like hydrogen, where they basically the car rains. It, it, it's it's exhaust as water. You know, nature's most abundant resource. The car rains. <laughs> you know? So, that, that's what I think we need to do. Um, you know, run the proper emissions equipment on your car. I don't care if you live in an area where they say... You know, this is no good. Or they say, oh, well, this program, you know, we don't have this program. That does not mean you are allowed to take that stuff off the car. Um, you better, Like I said, those of you that think that way, you better hope the federal government doesn't ever start coming around and enforcing that. Just saying. You know? It's just like here in New Jersey. Uh... I still remember because I was still an emissions inspector working on the lanes in Southampton, New Jersey, back in 2010 when they got rid of safety inspections on passenger cars. And I still remember one of the first people to come through after we scrapped emissions, or the, the, after we scrapped safety on passenger cars, was a police officer. Highly lifted truck, big tires, big lift. 
tires were beyond the point of the fenders where he, he would have needed flares, fender flares. Dark, extremely dark window tint. You know, wouldn't have passed an inspection at all because we had a tint meter at that station. It wouldn't have passed at all. And he had no paperwork for it anyway. He knew he was illegal. In fact, when he got out of the truck, he was laughing about it. How he purposely waited to bring it until after the safety inspection on passenger cars were gone. And that inspector felt forced, you know, not forced, but the, the inspector that inspected that vehicle was bummed. So I could, I, I could, I could nail this vehicle for so many things, but we can't do it no more. And they were frustrated as they were talking to me about it later on that day. Dave, I could have, I could have got that that truck for so many things under the old system. But these kinds of things need to be enforced. Yeah, so maybe maybe the federal government needs to get involved and, and, and just clearly explain things a little bit better. Now don't get me wrong. I want the aftermarket to do well. I want the Mustang guys to have fun. If you want to put a coyote, a coyote engine in your old Fox body Mustang, go for it. I think that's badass. I love it. But you need to be responsible about it. That's all. Yeah. I love the old Camaros. I love Novas. I love Chevelles. Of course, a lot of those, the Novas and Chevelles, didn't even come with catalytic converters because they were built before 1975. But I'm all for aftermarkets. The factory never should have should have been making these six and seven hundred horsepower cars. There should always be an aftermarket for that. That's the fun part of a of a person buying a tuner car and making improvements upon it. So they can put it on a dyno and see what it does. They can take it to the track and see how it responds, if it responds better. So I'm all for the aftermarket. I just think people need, you know, you got to do it. You got to be responsible about it. So, and I believe at the end of the day that maybe that just might help with our environment a little bit. Who the hell knows? You know, it's, it's worth a shot. Beats the hell out of driving a Tesla or an electric car, right? Just saying. Take care, guys. That's going to be it for this one. Have a good day.